All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my stream. Um, last week, we started a Fire Emblem Three Houses stream, um, specifically a 100% Ash and Moon playthrough. And today, we are going to um, continue with this stream and hopefully get to the beginner classes and unlock most of the areas in the monastery. I don't think we'll be able to unlock all of them, but I'll try to get as many of them as possible because the monastery is pretty big and you unlock it across multiple chapters. Now, before we actually get into that, let me see what's going on with my dino bot here, because it is supposed to notify my Discord, but apparently it doesn't, which is incredibly weird. I'll just notify people normally then. Let's go. Anyway, we are going to continue with the playthrough. As said, um, I will try to um, unlock most of the monastery, but I definitely want to get into the beginner classes because um, the starting classes, Commoner and Noble, are really, really shitty. Especially for spellcasters who have like reduced um, spell lists and only half the spells in the beginning, so definitely don't want that. And hello Hans, welcome to the stream. Okay, so let's get back into it. This was our latest one, so let's see where we actually left off. I think we were at the beginning of week three or month number three. I think we had just finished the tutorial, um, so we'll see where exactly we left off and where exactly we need to go. All right, yeah. So we finished a mock battle and as you can see, we can only explore because in the beginning the game really holds your hand and really wants you to see everything there is to see in the monastery, so let's go. Did we already pick up the DLC items? Yes, we did. Awesome. Let's see. So this unlocks something in the monastery, this unlocks something. This is actually... A neat little quest um, you get a weekly quest from ZF and that one always um, relates to the main quest of the next chapter so if you know what's coming you can see like the little connections there and this one is a DLC quest which is very easy okay so let's get to it we're going to start with Gerald and Leonie professor hey do you know how old Captain Gerald is that's enough, Leone. If I don't know, how could my child know? It's not normal to forget your own age, you know. It's kind of worrisome, actually. By the time you're forgetting your own age, you're past the point of caring. I guess if you put it that way, you've got a point. There's also the fact that Gerald is 150 years old and doesn't want anybody to know about it. I have a request. A uh, real battle this month. I hear the Knights of Cyrus are involved. I never taught you much about tactics, but there's a primer in my room. Give it a read. Byleth has been a mercenary for like how long? She was 21 years old. She was raised as a mercenary. You've never taught her anything about tactics? For shame, Gerald. For shame. Oh, and we can finally go to Abyss. That means we get to recruit a bunch of people and we get to meet the Abyss Keeper. Yes. Abyss Keeper is the best keeper. I'm sorry. Gatekeeper has nothing on him. What's that? Of course, we gotta wait for everybody to load in because three houses. It's always a joy. Do, 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 do. Come on, then, load. There you go. Hey, you. You're from up top, right? What business do you have here? Wait a minute. Ah, oh, got it. You're that 
new professor, aren't you? I suppose that means I have to let you pass. I guess, welcome to Abyss. This town is full of replicas, so watch your back down here. This is probably the most normal interaction we will have of this guy in the entire game. And this lady... This lady is honestly a bit creepy. Such an innocent face you have. This isn't a place for innocent people. Especially not if you're carrying money. Good to know. Uh, in a later chapter she will ask us for a strip of our flesh or something like that. Like. She is somebody we are going to stay away from. <laughs> hey, what are you looking at? I don't want any trouble. Get lost. But yeah, um, since we're not going to play the DLC, um, because the DLC is separate from the main campaign, just a little uh, backstory info on this place. Um, this is Abyss. It is beneath Garrick Mark. And it is basically a um, refuge for anyone who cannot live up top because they have weird powers or because they are involved in underground shady business and um, similar things. So this is basically an entire um, literally subculture beneath Garrick Mark. And these are the Ashen Wolves. They are um, also crest bearers. They are actually uh, bearing major crests, so the more uh, stronger crests, and they are bearing crests that are extremely rare. And each of them has a different reason for why they're here. This one is Happy. Um, she has a power where when she sighs, she attracts monsters, um, which came to her as a result of um, experimentation that was done against her will. And she hates the church because the church basically put her down there because the church could not fix what's wrong with her crest. They could not fix what's wrong with her power. And they were like, yeah, too, you're too dangerous to be kept on the surface where every little side could summon a horde of monsters. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to live down there. And she hates the church for that, which honestly, they didn't have that many options. Like, what were they supposed to do when you're literally every single side could cause you to call, call monsters? started teaching up on the surface. Nah. Even here people have been talking about you. Not that the gossip got everything right. I heard you were beautiful, but obviously that was an exaggeration. <laughs> I must admit, I love Happy in some respects. Uh, she has a lot of snark, especially in the English version. She's actually not as snarky in the Japanese version, from what I understand. Um, she is stunningly beautiful, and she can be a really powerful mage. The problem is she can also be somewhat of an ass. <laughs> so I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Happy. But the good news is since I've completed the DLC, I get to recruit all of them for free. So we're recruiting them. What? You want to know if I can help out? I've got time, but I don't want to spend it all serving the church. Don't make that face. Fine, fine. I'll back you up. Yeah, sure thing. You know? I've never really had a teacher before, and it'll be my first time at the Officers Academy. Sounds like Yay. fun. Oh, Chatterbox, you've been looking for me? I'd prefer not to visit the surface if I can help it. I don't want to run into any knights. Oh, um, you are, you just got recruited into a house that's going to be all knight characters, so, um, I'm sorry, Happy, you're gonna be surrounded by knights. Um. But yeah, this is basically how recruitment works, except uh, for all the other characters, if you want to recruit them, you need to have certain stats, you need to have certain um, skills and stuff like that. And for the Ashen Wolves that are down here, you basically just, you talk to them and you got them. Now, this is Yuri, he's actually the leader of the Ashen Wolves. He is down there because um, he used to be a student at the Officers Academy, with the Blue Lions actually because he was adopted by a Blue Lions, um, by a um, Farkas Lord, Count Roe. The problem is that um, Yuri got himself into a bit of a situation where a few knights ended up dead, and after that uh, he was basically, he could not have gone back home to House Rome. So he ended up down here, and he basically has a bunch of Robin, a group of Robin Hood-style thieves working for him. 
and occasionally not just thieves but like more serious crime this is the one of the guys who is not afraid to murk you like whoever you are it doesn't matter much to me but i do advise getting out of here before you get tangled up in trouble unless you've been sent here under someone's orders in which case i'll happily show you a good time <laughs> well i do like people with a healthy curiosity you are aware of how dangerous it is down here yeah Huh. You're that mercenary turned professor, aren't you? The one who showed up at the monastery kind of recently. Yeah. You're the one I've heard so much about. Well, I guess it's fine you're here, then. You can call me Yuri. You'll want to remember that. If you ever come down here again. So yeah, Yuri is a pretty big deal in Abyss because he is... He and his uh, band of thieves are basically keeping things running down there and making sure that everybody has food and water and all that. Um, and he also sometimes uh, works together with the church or at least is in communication with the church about helping out a bit. And what he just mentioned about a good time, um, his mother was a prostitute and uh, he himself also has a bit of background in that area. So that's why he is not afraid to flirt with anybody and he is in fact one of the only four romanceable male options for male by love want my help hmm? sure sure why not but i don't do anything for free in exchange let me attend the lectures you give those noble kids yeah it's a deal come on by whenever you need me if you're wondering why i won't come up to you it's because I've got people to watch over in Abyss. Now, Yuri also has the, um, I think, the highest speed growth in the entire game. He is super fast, but since he is a character who's designed to be a mix between physical and magical attacker, he's not all that great at either. Um, so, especially not for the magical part. Um, but he is incredibly fast. Trek coming all the way down here, huh? I'll be helping you out now. But just so you know, my life is still down here. If you can't find me in the classroom on the surface, you'll likely find me here instead. Alright, and this is Constance von Novell. She is from the Empire. Um, her house basically got caught in a clash between the Empire and Dacta and um, was completely destroyed. Like, her entire family was basically slaughtered all of that happened in the middle of a really nice and sunny day and this has kind of given her a um a disorder where uh, during the day if she's in the sunlight she just turns extremely gloomy extremely depressed she's got like insane mood swings and um she is also an incredibly powerful mage and she is one of only three characters in the game who can learn bolting which basically allows you to attack mages from halfway across the map, which is super neat. Um, but she only has two of the, two uses of those at most. And um, also, she's good with flying, so she makes an excellent dark flyer, which is honestly one of the best um, magic classes because flying is just broken OP in this game. And who might you be? Not an Abyssian, that much is clear at a glance. A visitor from above, perhaps? With what purpose? I'm sure I must have misheard you. Either that, or you haven't the slightest inkling of where you are. Oh, but of course! You must be the new teacher specially appointed by Lady Rhea. That is it, yes? Rumors have been flying underground about you. <laughs> well then, I am Constance Von Nouvelle. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> Alright. Oh, have you come to beg my assistance? Then rejoice, for you have the aid of a new bell. You did come seeking my aid, yes. Hopefully with something befitting my station. An assignment for the Officers Academy? How splendid. I was a former attendee there myself, you know. I shall be a model of grace in my duties. Hello, Iblari. So yeah, Constance has joined us. Yay! to invite me to a lesson or some such have you i prefer not to be above ground during the day when i can help it unless there are storm clouds above 
Also, Yuri and Constance have literally one of the worst parallax. Um, parallax are basically like side maps that you can do outside of the story. And theirs is an absolute nightmare. Especially if you are playing a solo or dual run. So um, that's something to look forward to. We're gonna save that one for like very, very late in the game. strikes me as a thief or merchant type. I don't know your money, do I? Oh, you're that new teacher everyone's been yapping about. And yet, you look younger than me. Weird. The name's Balthus, formerly of the Alliance. Don't beat around the bush, pal. You want my help, yeah? Can't blame you. Look, I get it. You're the new professor. You've got a lot on your plate. You need backup? I'm your guy. Fine, you've talked me into it, but I'm gonna need you to sweeten the deal if you catch my drift. Thank you, Iblari. Beautiful. Now about that sweetening, I'll need to attend your classes whenever the mood strikes. I get bored from time to time, all cooped up. Uh, at least he did not ask me for money because I only have two thousand five hundred and forty gold. <laughs> Um, so the deal with Balthus is that he is the son of a minor noble in the Alliance and a woman from basically backwater mountain town. Um, except his mother actually has a crest and he inherited a major crest from her. And he has a stepmother who wants him dead basically and a little brother who is actually a decent person. So he is constantly on the run from people that he owes money to and he is basically constantly also on the run from people paid by his mother to kill him. So, yeah, office. Well, did you come all the way here just to stare at my rippling abs, or did you want something? If you're gonna ask me for help on the surface, it better be real important. I try not to go up there unless I absolutely have to. Yeah, you try not to go up there because you've got bounty hunters after you, my man. And this is the Pagan Altar. Here we can technically uh, exchange Renown for items and items for Renown. Um, this can be absolutely broken. You can use that to get infinite the gold and infinite Renown fairly easily. Um, we are mostly not going to use that because we're just going to play this game as if we were not using New Game Plus, which means the... I don't even know how much Renown I have right now. Yeah. <laughs> I will not use most of my 240,000 renown points just yet. <laughs> um, we will use some of them once we get the um, saint statues, but even then we will only use as much as we should have at the time. Um, I am really not trying to make this game any easier with New Game Plus. I literally just play New Game Plus for the hairstyles. So. All right, so now that we've recruited everybody, let's go back and also let's make sure that we actually give everybody um, correct items because we're not gonna need Balthus, Happy or Yuri anytime soon. We're not gonna use them for fighting, but we are going to put them as adjutants eventually. And I am going to try to get every single character, even the ones that I recruit and never use, into a masterclass. So I will need to level these guys up somehow. So let's check their goals. Um, Yuri. <sighs> Yuri, Yuri, Yuri. Um, your best class would be Trickster, but that is not a master class, so we're going to put you into Mortal Savant instead. Mortal Savant is a, sword, is a class that can use um, swords and magic. And you might say, wow, this is super cool, this is an amazing master class. The problem is it has a 10% speed growth penalty, which is ouch. There's, there's very few characters who can pull off Mortal Savant and still have a decent speed growth. And Yuri, thankfully, is one of them. So we are going to put his focus on Sword and Reason. Balthus can stay as he is. Um, he is going to go into Warmaster. Um, she is going to learn Reason and Faith to go into Grammary. And she's also going to learn Reason and Faith to go into Grammary. Now the problem is obviously since Happy doesn't like the church, uh, she does not have a strength in faith and she starts out with an E so she's not very into the faith spells but she does actually have an amazing spell list. Um, as you can see she has dark magic which is 
because of the experimentation that also caused her to be able to attract um, monsters. But um, the important part is for her faith spell list, for example, she learns warp. For her um, black magic spell list, she learns some super strong black magic. So she actually has a very good spell list. And so Happy is really, really good as a magic user. Also, she has one of the only um, one of the only good uh, personal skills in the game, which is Monstrous Appeal. Now, this says makes all eff attacks effective against monsters and makes it easier for monsters to target the unit. Now, the first part, okay, so that basically means no matter what you attack a monster with, it's always going to be an effective attack. And she can break a monster's barrier with any attack in one hit. Cool. Very super. The second part, though, basically means that if she is within the range of a monster, the monster will attack her. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter if somebody else is closer. It doesn't matter if somebody else is weaker. You could put a level one character and a level forty happy next to the same monster, and the monster would attack happy. And you can actually use that if you play um, Silver Snow. And spoiler character for spoiler for Silver Snow, the character at the end of Silver Snow is a dragon, the final boss, and. It's a dragon that does magic damage. Happy has a super good resistance stat, so you can basically just tank the final boss's magic attacks with Happy, because dragon being a monster will always attack Happy, and then you can just use the rest of your cast to do whatever. Um, so that it is, she's super broken for Silver Snow, is all I'm saying. Um, let's check inventory. Um, he can keep the sword, but he can ditch everything else because they, these guys are not going to see battle. Also, you might wonder what are these Abyssian uh, um, exam passes. Basically, each of those four characters comes with their own class, which are not master classes, they are special classes. And um, in order to uh, get into those special classes, you need an Abyssian exam pass. Um, so you get one for free coming with these characters because they are canon in those classes. But you can also get more Abyssian exam passes from the altar in Abyss. But we're probably not going to need them, so let's just ditch them. 